Hello and welcome back to a Kooky Corner of YouTube. Today I am inking out um, one of the prompts for the Burb Fest challenge that I'm doing at the moment over on Instagram and I thought um, I would share with you some of my tips for um, making time for art or just getting into creating it or making it a little easier for yourself. And so I think the first one is just to prioritize art, uh, not over everything that you need to do, such as looking after your family, looking after yourself, your self health and things like that. Um, but no, just to, to make it rather than something that you do when you've done everything else is just to carve yourself out a little bit of time to make something, to create something, to draw something, to paint or however you create, just to make sure that you are getting that little bit of time in for yourself. Um, and this way it becomes a habit. If you try and find a few minutes or just half an hour or an hour a day, however much time you can spare, but instead of making sure that you've done all the other things before you get to do your art, just prioritize that little section of time for yourself. I know it's hard, um, but you can vary the amount of time you spend on something. So some days you may have half an hour, some days you might find you have an hour and a half. But if you set out to prioritize that time, what happens is that then you'll start, your creative brain will start to flow because sometimes we tend to, in our day-to-day -day life, we find lots of things that stop us from, from making that time, from saying, okay, this is a little bit of time for me. So prioritizing a little bit of time, penciling it in, making sure you have got that bit of time for you, that will help greatly in the process of making art. Um, because you know you've got time dedicated to it, nothing else is gonna get in your way. I mean, I know I do other things. <laughs> when I'm creating my art, I'm generally either listening to a podcast or an audio book, um, but that goes along with it sometimes on music. Sometimes music I listen to when I'm creating and you can pick music to, to go with your mood or to even inspire what you're going to draw. Um, so yes, prioritizing art in your life is going to be my first tip. My second tip for you is to find a space that is just for you. Now, this will depend greatly on how much space you have available to you, but if you have a small area that you can dedicate to just putting your things in and having them ready to be on the go, to be used, rather than having to clear things away, which I find is, a, and I have done this myself, I've used dining tables, kitchen tables, and, um, just literally a tray on my lap have been my my art spaces in the past and I'm really really lucky now that I have got a dedicated space that I can create in and I know that not everybody is as lucky as I am in order you know to to do that but there is always somewhere that you can find a little corner of somewhere um, I think I've, I've worked in a laundry room before. That was my very first studio. It was like an old laundry room that was at the side of our house. And um, obviously it didn't have washers and things and it was meant to be a laundry room. And it was so small and tiny, but I loved it because it was my space and I could leave things in there. So I had a little table in there. It was lucky enough to have a sink in there as well. So I got running water for my um, for washing my brushes, etc. But just having a space in which to create will make it easier. I know it sounds like I'm um, sort of explaining the obvious. Having your things out ready to roll every time you have that space that you've carved out in order to, to make something, 
it just makes it so much easier to dive in. And um, other spaces I've had have been like a little table, you know, the little IKEA tables, the smallest ones you can get, the, the top and the legs that you put onto them. Um, I've had that in uh, a window, a bay window, and literally that was my space. Um, I've had a tray on my lap. And again, if it's something that you can get a nice, um, like a tray that goes over your lap, they do them, I know, in Hobbycraft, and you can just have that as a space. The smallest space that you can get is better than nothing. And so having somewhere that you can put something down and leave it and know that you can leave it to dry and you don't have to clear it away is such a big advantage if you can do it. Um, so yeah, tiny desk, anything, you know, just a bookshelf where you can store all your art supplies, something simple like that. And that will make making art um, a priority for you so that you've got somewhere to go, time to do it. My third tip is always, always keep a small sketchbook with you wherever you are. Um, having a, something to work in when you've got moments, like if you're waiting for a dentist appointment, if you're waiting for a doctor's appointment, sat in a queue, uh, not, not while you're driving, obviously, but if you're, if you're lucky enough to have someone else driving and, and you have a little bit of time, I don't advise it for people to get travel sick because it's not great for bending your head forward and drawing at the same time. But train journeys, things like that, something where you can, you've got that time, you're sat, you can't do anything else. Having a sketchbook with you and, and a pencil, just a simple pencil or a pen or even a ballpoint pen, just something to sketch into, some surface and an item to draw or yeah, paint with even, you could have a paintbrush. Uh, one of those ink brushes, that and and making that something that you do instead of, I don't know, just sitting and looking out the window on a train journey. <laughs> if you've got a little sketchbook that helps pass the time so much and it will help you to, um, to lock into your creativity, to lock into those ideas and get them down quickly. Sometimes you could use your sketchbook just for doodling. If you don't know what to draw, just doodle. I have had a doodle sketchbook um, with me at all times. So, you know, you just sit, get it out and just start doodling. And then sometimes some magic appears and the doodle turns into something that you want to explore further. So. A little sketchbook can be your initial ideas and then you can develop it further as you go along. You could find that you want to make this into a bigger piece, but in which case you've got your initial idea written down. Also, with the development of technology, your sketchbook could be an iPad and you could have your every item that you need to have with you in a, a program called Procreate with lots of brushes and pens so you don't need to have any mess at all. Um, so those are two ways. I, I like both. I have to say I do like having a physical sketchbook. I love the feel of the paper and using the, the, the pencil on top of it. The sounds, you know, it's all part of it, isn't it? Creativity. But I equally love using Procreate uh, because that's such a simple way of uh, having like a digital sketchbook if you like and um, that program can go as far as you want it to go. So both of those ways are great but always make sure that you have something to draw on and something to draw with. Do a prompt challenge. I don't know if you've ever watched um, some of my other videos that I've made. I am at the moment in the midst of a prompt challenge which is called Burb Fest. And there are many, many challenges that you could jump into where you have a list of things that you can draw or create. Um, and it just kind of takes out that decision-making process. So you know you've got a list. This is what we do today. How are we gonna do it? 
and literally it's a really good way of connecting with other artists who are doing the same thing as you. So if you're all doing the same prompt list, this makes a common denominator between you and you've got you can look at other people's work, see how they tackle the prompt, gives you more ideas, brings on your creativity and as I say takes away the guesswork of looking at a blank page and saying what am I going to draw. Um, every month there is something. Every month of the year you will find that if you go on places like Instagram there are people who have put out prompt lists for you to work from and you don't even have to do them for that month. If you can't do it that particular month, if there's really a prompt list that you love, you could save it and do it for another month. There's, there are no police. The benefits of doing it at, at the time that it comes out is that you get that connection with other artists who are doing the same thing. But I do think that it's a great way of getting you drawing every single day. Every day you are building on skills, you are building on ideas, you are trying different materials maybe, working and learning how the materials that you already have work together. And it's a great way of doing that. Um, the one I'm doing at the moment, Burb Fest, it's simply done in a very small sketchbook that I also did another prompt list in, which was uh, Ghost Toba. That was back in October. So if you want to check back on my videos previous to that, you can see some of that going on as well. But I was traveling a lot during October, so I had to have something that was portable and um, easily accessible. And I managed to do it. Even though I was away, I managed to find some time to do my prompts. So do a prompt challenge is my tip number four. Find a, a list that you like and and go for it. Tip number five, practice, practice, you guess it, practice. The more you draw, the more you take the time to, to put into your artwork, even if you're doing five minute sketches, even if you're just spending that five minutes just trying to draw something down. You can draw anything you want. There's always something that you could take and sketch. You can draw things from your imagination. But do take the time to practice your skills. The sketchbook idea, the prompt challenge, having somewhere to work and prioritizing it will make sure that you are improving from day to day. I always used to say to some of my students, if you do a little bit each day and you keep that sketchbook and you look back right at the very beginning when you started to the end of the sketchbook, you will see so much improvement. You will see how you have developed as an artist. Maybe you found your own artistic voice. Um, you can see some, you know, your own style emerging. And that is what happens when you do the things to devote time towards your art and practicing every single day. There's always an excuse not to do it. I know <laughs> there is always an excuse not to draw, not to make something, not to create something. You need, as I say, go back to our first tip, prioritize the time and all of these together will help you to find the time to be the artist that you want to be, to develop your skills and to develop the way you want to draw. And I hope that these five tips have helped in some way and um, that maybe you can you know, now go on and, and find your own prompt list. It's finding a tribe, isn't it? It's finding a tribe of people who are enjoying the same thing that you do. And that's what I've got with the Burb Fest, and which is why I am enjoying doing my piece of artwork every day for this particular challenge. And I hope that you can find something similar for yourselves. That's me done for now. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you like uh, the content I've put out here, think about subscribing and then you will click on the bell maybe and that will tell you every time I upload a video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.